Now what will it be? Let's try that zero zero. Yeah, that's that's not quite right. It's close, it's slipping around a bit. What about zero? I think that, that screw that was forced in there was probably not the right thread either, so it's probably cross-threaded. Let's put the whole other tab on there, screw and all, and see how this behaves. looks more appropriate yeah and it, it moves with the shutter speeds thing just just nicely that's good so here's the front plate and I need to wipe a bit of molybdenum paste on this uh, area here which creates our detent for our shutter speeds. Swing that round in position, it's engaged, I heard it click in, that's that post I mentioned earlier that sticks up from the mechanism plate and locates that. Just checking the feel of that to make sure that the Detents are, are positive, but not too stiff. If they're too stiff, you might not notice when it becomes unengaged with this as it does at the end of the stroke. As you can see, when you get beyond the range of the aperture, it'll click over. We'll back that up a stop, I think, so that its, it's action is... smoother and you may be more aware of this disengaging if it does does so. That's slightly bent too. I'm just going to give that a little twist that up straight again. That feels good. So it's going to line up the screw hole here and put the lock screw in there that stops that retaining ring from backing off. That's that tiny little black screw. Easily lost. And fortunately for us, both the rusty parts shutter and this shutter, the good shutter, both had that screw present. So that's the shutter done. I'll put the lens in place, lining up the red dot. Clicks into place nicely. And the rear group should just screw in. There's a bit of a mark on that. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's where I was cleaning the outside of the lens and, and must have been a touch of naphtha flew, flowed through onto the lens itself. Right, let's put that in there. That looks good. Now it's a bit bashed about. There's a bit of brass showing at the back there. Just blacken up some of those damaged edges. And a marker pen's pretty good for this. It would be even better if the marker pen was matte black, but they don't come matte black. Uh, 
it just takes that bright brass off the back there which we do not want poking into the back of the camera you don't want extra reflections so I've got to put this in the camera now I've got a retaining ring here it's anyone's guess what state this will be in See if any I've had this through the cleaner it should be pretty good let's see if it screws onto that lens onto the shutter for a start here it does and we have some damaged paper shims and one metal shim here now that looks slightly corroded but judging by the pattern on it, it may well have come off could have come off either shutter, let's try that I'm going to check the shutter, check the camera and see if the focus is correct so we've got to get our lens and shutter in place we need to make sure that it cocks and fires correctly anyway It'll either be there or one notch over, I think. Let's find out what happens when I cock it. No, not quite. All I'm doing here is altering the timing between the film advance and the shutter. Here we go. And I was listening to hear the shutter cocking actions happening before the film advance reaches the end of the advance stroke. Now this retaining ring likewise has been somewhat damaged in the wars. I'll just blacken that edge. Oh yeah, that's had a hard life. I'll put the retaining ring in place, screw it down, and then I want to check the focus. And somewhere here I've got the tool. I'll just do that up lightly because chances are I'll be coming back in here to remove that anyway because we don't know which camera body started with which shutter and um, consequently whether the focus is accurate I'll test that that focus was spot on so the paper shims probably came off the other camera now I've noticed I forgot to put something in here and it's the little component that prevents you from being able to depress the shutter release if the shutter's not actually cocked. It's easily forgotten um, and you wouldn't notice it in most circumstances. That was it.
always use a wooden toothpick or a bamboo skewer or something to move this retaining ring around. If you use the tip of a screwdriver or something you will inevitably slip off and end up scratching something and leaving ugly marks. You never want to leave ugly marks because then some rude technician will come along behind you and say what a bloody awful job you did. You're going to say it anyway, I suppose. That's that part. Now I can put the rangefinder on since we know the focus is good. The rangefinder can go on. So I have two screws that would hold the rangefinder in place, and here we have the rangefinder. Now I'm going to put a couple of do dobs of uh, lacquer on here so the rangefinder won't shift position if the camera gets thumped and camera is always getting thumped because people are never as never as careful as they might be these screws of course like all the other screws a little bit damaged. I don't think that will cause me any problems. Got one started. You get better at this with practice dropping screws in from a great height. That screw is very damaged. Have I got a better one anywhere? Let's have a look. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, okay, here's one that's um, not quite so ugly. It's still ugly, it's just not full-on Quasimodo ugly. And that does not want to go. Now we're in, in we're going now. All right, range finders in place. Coupling to the focus, let's check what's happening. It's not returning all the way to the infinity position, that's hardly surprising. Let's just slacken that screw, move that arm forward slightly, tighten that screw back up, check again. Now it removes to the infinity position fine, but it doesn't lift off the infinity position quickly enough for my liking. So we need to go back a bit. These adjustments are quite subtle. Don't be surprised if you've got to uh, go backwards and forwards a number of times until you get it just right. That's good, my vertical alignment's slightly out, my moving image is slightly low. I think that's good. A 
little bit more on the horizontal. Lock that in place. That moved when I locked it, so I've got to go back again. No. Too far. Still too far. I'll come back when I've got it right. It's back out. I've got problems. When I move my eye in the across the finder from one side to the other, the images diverge vertically. It's almost certainly because the position here had been altered. So I've got to get that right. I'll try lifting it slightly. It certainly shifted the images relative to each other. I've got to get my vertical alignment correct here now well that that's much better they're not shifting relative to each other as I move it My horizontal alignment's gone to hell. Back later. It's alive, the rangefinder's working correctly. That was another 10 minutes of my life I'm not getting back. Let's put the film release button on. shutter release button the exposure meter this is the one marked good it doesn't look particularly good but if you saw the one marked bad you'd know that this one is good at least by comparison missing its cover glass there but I do have the cover glass so we'll be able to put that in place and we are missing one screw screw back in place because that also holds a shim underneath that strap lug so I don't want to disturb that and I need to find a replacement screw 
And yes, I know with a second camera's worth of bits and pieces there, I should be able to find a replacement screw, no trouble at all. Unfortunately, given the dreadful state of the screws, there's nothing there that I would choose to use. That's finding one with the right size head and the end of the right length and nickel plated not brass nor chromed this one the cover glass I said we had a cover glass and I do it's here Not very pretty. I'll see if I can get that muck off the top of there first. That's at least two generations of glue on there. And the cover I've got here is, is, a, is a mass of smeary, greasy fingerprints, amongst other things. Here we go, so a little bit of adhesive on there would be the answer, with probably a little bit being the operative word. Three small dots should do nicely. That's it. Here's our shutter release button. So all we want is a top cover. What of the what's the options? This one or this one? Both need to be stripped and cleaned. That's the earlier of the two. This discoloration on here, that's just some sort of filth. I don't know what it is. It shouldn't be there.
it's coming away but I don't know how much of the markings will come away <coughs> as I work my way down through the layer of grime I don't know what's been put on there I don't know whether it's a lacquer or something that was put on there it's it has since perhaps it was a varnish they get that with paintings don't they they put a varnish layer on them to protect them and the varnish goes dark over time perhaps it was something like that this is just naphtha and it's making a reasonable impression on that stuff It's very nasty. Well, that was a near run thing. Would I ever get a camera out of this or would I go crazy first and smash it with a big hammer? Here we have it, the Retina 3C. I cleaned up one of the two top covers. This was one, the earliest one, the earliest serial number. Was it the correct one for the body? I don't know. Given the number of that I've got parts here from two cameras and I'm a bit vague about which was the original body and it not being very easy to tell which top came from which body I think this will probably have to do but there it is it's a camera it's all working film advance works nicely shutter works nicely rangefinder works nicely now that one was a challenge the top covers cleaned up you'll see that I got that filthy orange gunk off those knobs I suspect it was a varnish of some sort and something that had decayed and with time because it wasn't present anywhere else on the camera top only on the two dials which was very weird it suggests to me that they were using it briefly in the factory to cover their dials uh, probably with a view to protecting them so that the paint markings didn't disappear and for one reason or another they either moved to a different product which didn't discolour or they discontinued the practice altogether I'm afraid we'll never know but this one can go back to its owner and Scattered across the tabletop here, I've got one rusty shutter and a thousand pieces. The camera body with its shot bellows, various other nasty things there. I did have a thought about those bellows, about what might have killed them. And what I suspect, I've got a body here, has this got, now this one is semi-complete, I can't really show you on that one, this is the one I want this one what I suspect is that that little arm in the shutter release that I'm always telling people to be careful of because if the shutter release shaft comes loose it's allowed to fall out of the camera then this is no longer trapped in place by it and if the struts are fully extended at the front and there's no shutter release running through this piece it can easily wiggle its way loose and when it wiggles its way loose it's just as likely to fall down between the gap between the shroud here and the bellows and that's what I suspect has happened to this camera I suspect that's how those bellows became punctured is because somebody took the top off the camera allowed the shutter release but shaft to come loose, come adrift. This piece fell in. They probably didn't know what the hell they were going to do after that. There was no danger they were going to get the camera back together easily. But this piece probably did the damage. And there's another telltale here because this is loose. The shaft is loose on the cross arm. And when I've struck that in the past and I needed to use the part again, they have to be re-riveted at this point. But certainly they must have suffered some abuse to come loose. And I think that would fit the bill. So, 
that would be how you would finish off the bellows on a Retina 3C. That's not our problem. We have a complete camera to go back to the owner. So, I, this video camera is telling me it's going to stop working any second. Thanks for watching.